So here's the first and basic type of question you're going to be able to get once you understand what Avogadro's number is, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which of course, again, really huge number. You realize that if, if an atom was the size of a green pea, just like, you know, like, like this is like a green pea, if you had one mole of green peas, you would cover 250 planets the size of the Earth one meter deep in peas. That's a lot of peas. That's how big the mole is. This is crazy number. Now, so let's say somebody says to you, you, you've got 2.83 moles of lead. How many atoms of lead do you have? Well, okay, now first of all, think about it. 6.02 times 10 to 23, that, that's one mole. So if you've got 2.83 moles, that's got to be bigger than 6.02 times 10 to 23. So make sure that when you look at your answer in the end, see if it makes common sense. If you, if you divide it the wrong way or multiply it the wrong way, you're going to find out just by using common sense. Trust yourself. Now, 2.83 moles of lead. Now, here's the way I like to do these calculations. I don't use formulas. I use my brain and understand ratios. And all I have to know right now for a ratio is that there are 6.02 times 10 to 23 things in a mole. Okay, so 2.83 moles of lead. You know what I don't want? I don't want moles of lead. I always write these things out in, in a, what we call a dimensional analysis or unit cancellation method because I think it's the best. So you do it because it's good. What I don't want is moles. So I'm going to multiply by a ratio that gets rid of moles. And what do I want to keep? Well, I said that the question was, find the atoms of lead. So is there a relationship between atoms of lead and moles of lead? Well, yeah, there is. And the, ratio, the relationship and the ratio is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of lead every time you have one mole. That is exactly one mole and an exact number, a number I arrived at through counting, like one mole of something, and that number that's in a ratio like this, it's going to have an infinite number of significant digits. So here's the thing, when we get the answer here and do this math, and by the way, this cancels with this, and so you're left with atoms of lead in the end, that's what you get. Make sure that you write everything out properly. The answer here is going to be 1.70, times 10 to the 24 atoms of lead. That's the calculator barf. So you type in everything, the calculator goes, here's the number. You don't keep that entire number. You have to use significant digits. And again, the rule is this. I have three significant digits in this number. How many in this number? Three. How many here? Infinite. What's the least number of significant digits found in this question? Three. And so therefore, the answer is not this whole number here, but we're going to keep three significant digits. 1.70, that number is a three, so we are going to round down to leave ourselves with 1.70, times 10 to the 24 atoms of lead. So that's how you do that one. Okay, now, look at this one. You have 1.96 times 10 to the 26 molecules of methane, and the question is going to be, how many moles of methane do you have? Okay, so how many moles do you have? Well, first of all, that's bigger than Avogadro's number. So the answer you're going to get is going to be more than one mole, because 10 to the 26 is bigger by at least a thousand times, than 10 to the 23. So you know where your answer should be and should end up. Make sure that you do the unit cancellation right and you're going to be fine. Okay, so 9.6 times 10 to 26 molecules of methane. You know what you don't want? You don't want molecules of methane. You don't want that. But what do you want? The question was, how many moles of methane do you have? Is there a relationship between the two? Yes, there is. For every one mole, and by the way, in front of the, the, the word here, the, the abbreviation mole, M-O-L, you're always going to put the number one. Don't be thinking anything else other than the number one. So, it's one mole, and how many? Well, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules every time you have one mole. What you end up doing is this times one, don't do that in your calculator, it's embarrassing, divided by... This number divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. What's that equal to? Well, I get 1,594, 94.68. What's, what's the answer when molecules of methane cancel? Moles of CH4. But wait, there's two significant digits here, and there's three here, infinite. So you're going to keep two significant digits. <gasps> I can't do that. 
Because I can't keep, like, 15. No, you can't. You can't how, what are you going to do? You're going to have to use scientific notation here. Remember scientific notation, you always move the decimal behind the first number. So you're going to have to move this three times over. So that answer is going to be 1.5. Now, now wait, we're going to keep two significant digits. So I'm going to go 1.5. 6 times 10 to the 3, because that moves it over 3 times, 10 to the 3 moles of CH4, because that's in the thousands, and that number is essentially 1,600 to two significant digits. That's what that number is. And that's how we do the sig digs with these first step type of mole questions. Now here's a little bit of a trickier question. You've got 6.40 moles of ammonia. Somebody says, okay, how many atoms of hydrogen do you have in that quantity of ammonia? All right. Now, you say, huh, okay, well, here's the thing. I can't go directly from moles of this to the atoms of this because we're talking about a molecule of ammonia. Now, do you realize that in one molecule of ammonia, you actually have three <laughs> atoms of hydrogen? Well, sure you do. That, that's pretty obvious there. Now, there's another way to look at this ratio, too, and you can do this question one of two different ways. If you had one mole of ammonia, how many moles of hydrogen would you have? Well, some people actually get tripped up by that, but it's really quite straightforward. If there was a mole of me somewhere, that's a lot of chem guys, 6.02 times 10 to 23 of them, how many eyeballs would there be? Well, if you have one mole of me, there would be two moles of eyeballs, right? So if you had one mole of ammonia, you'd actually have three moles of hydrogen. So, one way to approach this question would be to say, well, you know what? Now, here's the thing. First of all, 6.40 uh, moles of ammonia, I don't want. That's what you always start with. I don't want moles of ammonia. What do I want? Well, you can't really go right again to atoms of hydrogen because there's no ratio between those two. There is between moles of ammonia and moles of hydrogen, or there is between moles of ammonia and 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of ammonia. Do you agree with that statement? Does that make sense to you? That there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of ammonia every time you have one mole. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, now to finish it, you just say to yourself, hey, guess what I don't want? I don't want molecules of ammonia. What do I want? I want atoms of hydrogen. And is there a relationship between the two? Yes, a very obvious one. There's three atoms of H every time you have one molecule of NH3. And so then when you do all of this math here by multiplying 6.40 times 6.02 times 1023 times 3 divided by 1 divided by 1, you get... Now here's a little bit of a trickier question. You've got 6.40 moles of ammonia. Somebody says, okay, how many atoms of hydrogen do you have in that quantity of ammonia? All right. Now, you say, huh, okay, well, here's the thing. I can't go directly from moles of this to the atoms of this because we're talking about a molecule of ammonia. Now, do you realize that in one molecule of ammonia, you actually have three <laughs> atoms of Hydrogen. Well, sure you do. That, that's pretty obvious there. Now, there's another way to look at this ratio, too. And you can do this question one of two different ways. If you had one mole of ammonia, how many moles of hydrogen would you have? Well, some people actually get tripped up by that, but it's really quite straightforward. If there was a mole of me somewhere, that's a lot of chem guys, 6.02 times 10 to 23 of them, how many eyeballs would there be? Well, if you have one mole of me, there would be two moles of eyeballs, right? So if you had one mole of ammonia, you'd actually have three moles of hydrogen. So one way to approach this question would be to say, well, you know what? Now, here's the thing. First of all, 6.40 uh, moles of ammonia, I don't want. That's what you always start with. I don't want moles of ammonia. What do I want? Well, you can't really go right again to atoms of hydrogen because there's no ratio between those two. There is between moles of ammonia and moles of hydrogen, or there is between moles of ammonia and 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules 
of ammonia. Do you agree with that statement? Does that make sense to you? That there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of ammonia every time you have one mole. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, now to finish it, you just say to yourself, hey, guess what I don't want? I don't want molecules of ammonia. What do I want? I want atoms of hydrogen. And is there a relationship between the two? Yes, a very obvious one. There's three atoms of H every time you have one molecule of NH3. And so then when you do all of this math here by multiplying 6.40 times 6.02 times 1023 times 3 divided by 1 divided by 1, you get 1.16 times 10 to 25 atoms of hydrogen, and that's to three significant digits. Okay, so that's how you do this one. Now let's put in something called molar mass and be able to do a little bit more extensive questions.